Hello, and welcome to The Art of Being Human. Today I'm going to start a series of segments on diabetes. And this is near and dear to my heart because I am a brittle diabetic taking five shots of insulin a day. And millions and millions of people have diabetes. Many people don't even know that they have it. And it's a very serious disease. And we need to cover that because it can affect your personality. It can affect your entire life. And I've been asked to buy several people to do series on diabetes and of course I'm very very familiar with it my father died of complications of diabetes my great grandmother lost one of her legs due to diabetes and so it's kind of in the family both in my mother's side and in my father's side so just to kind of give you a heads up if your parents are diabetic then there's a 50% chance that you are going to be diabetic. It's rather high, but that's what it is, especially if your father is a diabetic. It seems to be more prone if your father is a diabetic that you will have it than if your mother has it. But the general rule of thumb is, is if your parents are diabetic, either one or both, then there's a 50% chance that you will have it yourself. Now, a lot of people have it, and they don't know that they have it. When I was first diagnosed, I had gone to a foot doctor, and every so often I got a foot infection. And I said, you know what, and I'd go back, and he'd say, well, I must have left a little sliver of a nail when I cut your nail, because I was going to a podiatrist regularly. And he would say, I must have left a little sliver of a nail in your skin, and that's why you get your foot infection. And then he'd, he'd work with it, and it would heal. And then before I knew it, there was another foot infection. And then before I knew it, there was another foot infection. Well, my doctor was retiring, and another doctor was buying out his practice. So I decided in order to get the do be able to have a relationship with a doctor, I didn't want to wait. I knew that he was coming a little early. So I made an appointment with him, and I had, sure enough, a foot infection. So he examined me. He says, Pat, I can't let you leave the office like this. You have a terrible foot infection. Well, I'd made an appointment for my podiatrist to go the next day. Then he checked me and he says, do you have any idea what your blood sugar is? It is so high. I didn't have a clue. Now I knew my father was diabetic and there was diabetes in my family, but it never dawned on me that I would have it too. One of the problems with diabetes is the people who have it just don't expect they're going to get it. If they're feeling good, who thinks, oh, I must be diabetic because my father or my mother is and I'm feeling great. I did not have a lot of the usual symptoms of thirst and uh, not being able to sleep or being continually tired and stuff like that. I just felt fine. It's just these stupid foot infections. And that is one of the symptoms. Infections that do not heal or frequent infections is a dead giveaway that you can be diabetic. And there are a lot of other symptoms too. And we're going to go into all of that. Well, it is a very serious uh, illness. It can change you. It's it's a chronic illness. It does not go away, and it gets worse and worse with time. And if you start off, they usually try to, cont to contain it with diet, and usually that's only going to work for a short period of time, although it does work for some people, and then they move on to the pills. And you take the pills for so many years, and then the pills don't work anymore, and then you go and you have to take the insulin. And a lot of people resist insulin. They don't want to take it. They can't imagine that their life will be based upon a needle injections, carrying all this stuff with you. And all the time, when I go out or if I'm traveling, I have to have my insulin. I have to have snacks with me. I always have to have syringes. I always I have to have a blood glucose meter so you have to check your blood sugar then you have to base your insulin use uh, depending upon what your blood sugar number is and it gets to be complicated it also gets to be irritating until you get used to it and it's a regular part of your life then you don't think about it so much and I've been diabetic for over 25 years so for me I should be used to it but I still have days when I forget to take my insulin and it doesn't seem natural Actually, who do I have to have a needle? But I'm telling you that if you do need insulin, take it. You will feel much, much better if you're on insulin, if you
you need it than trying to get along without it because you'll get symptoms and you won't feel well. And with insulin, with an insulin regimen that's carefully regulated by your physician and yourself, you can feel like a normal person, do lots of normal things. You may get tired more easily, but if you have it carefully controlled, you will live a normal lifestyle and you'll be able to live for a good many years. So it's not like the end of the world if you have it, although if you're diagnosed with it, there'll be a period of weeks when you think it's like the end of the world. It does seem to get worse with time. So let's take a look at some of these charts here. Millions of people have diabetes and many don't know that they have it. It is a dangerous illness. It can cause many, many complications such as, and we're going to get more into the complications a little later, but just to kind of give you a rundown, um, <clears throat> your eyes, you can get bleeding in the back wall of the eye and that can cause blindness. You can have nervous system problems. You can have neuropathy, which is a pain and an itch and tingling sensations in your nerves of your hands, your feet, uh, your legs, and so forth. It's very uncomfortable, but when your blood sugar is basically all right, when you've managed it well enough that it's all right, a lot of those symptoms go away. You can have your kidneys shut down. You can have skin changes. You have a lot of dry skin. It's possible to have a lot of sores on the body. Uh, you can lose your limbs due to infection because what happens is that you have poor circulation with this disease. Um, the excess sugar in the blood causes nerve damage. Now, there are a couple of things that always drove me crazy about being diabetic when I found out I would have to have insulin. For one thing, you see these advertisements, if you would just lose weight, you wouldn't be diabetic. If you lose weight and exercise, you can cure diabetes. I think that's a lot of crock. Uh, in this way, if you're overweight, it's harder to manage. You can manage it better if you're not overweight. But the point of the fact is there are many, many diabetics that are diagnosed that are thin. When I was first diagnosed, I was thin. I had lost 30 pounds in six weeks, and I said to the doctor, it is so easy to lose weight. I can't imagine what pe why people have a problem with that. But I was losing weight rapidly, and that's one of the first signs of diabetes. I didn't realize it, but of course I, he did, and so he tested me right away, and that's what I had. But you see, as soon as you take insulin, you put on weight. To say that your diabetes is caused by your weight, to me, is like blaming the victim. And a person who is taking medication for diabetes is going to put on weight. But there are many people, their diabetes is not caused by being overweight. Their diabetes is caused because it's in the genes. They've inherited it from their family. There's a family history of it. So I think some of these, uh, these advertisements that you see just get your weight in control and then you won't be diabetic. I do not believe that for a second. I believe that if it is genetic, if you, if you have it in your genes, then you're going to get it. No matter whether you're heavy or you're not heavy, you're just going to get it because it's a part of you. It's part of your genetic structure. Now, I know some people get diabetes and they have no family history and they don't know where it came from. I'm going to, during the next segment, talk to you about a doctor who found that he had it. He had been perfectly happy. He was thin. He was active, physically active participated in a lot of sports and yet he had thirst and all of the kinds of things you get when you're diabetic and uh, he had no family history of it and nobody knew where it came from. There is also the possibility of having the flu. I don't know if you realize this or not but if you have the flu or some kind of a viral infection it can settle in the pancreas and it can damage the cells that produce the insulin and as a result of that, you can be a very serious diabetic, basically getting it as a side effect of the flu. But if it doesn't 
if it doesn't settle there, if it doesn't damage the pancreas, then you go through the flu like everybody else. You get better from it, you're fine. So at any rate, it's, it's a complicated situation, but a lot of people have it. And I don't like the fact that people are told all the time that if you just lose weight, you wouldn't have it, because I don't believe that for a fact. The other thing that bothered me a lot is the fact that when I first had to take insulin, that my doctor called it a disease. And I thought to myself, it's not a disease. A disease is caused by bacteria and viruses, like you catch a cold or you get the flu or something like that. But it is considered to be a disease. And I started thinking about it. I thought of it as like a condition. Your pancreas isn't working. That's a condition. How does that become a disease without some kind of a viral attack or some kind of a, a bacterial attack? But you see, we call mental illnesses diseases. Uh, schizophrenia is a mental disease. Well, what's a disease then? So I checked into it. A disease is when you have a group of symptoms and you're ill, and it has a known cause. Mental illness has a known cause. If you're schizophrenic and you, and you have schizophrenia because the neurotransmitters in your brain aren't working right, the biochemistry isn't right, then that's a known cause of the illness. So therefore, they classify it as a disease. It doesn't have to be caused by something that's a virus or a bacteria. We normally think of diseases as caused by bacteria and viruses, but that's not what the, what the, uh, what the uh, uh, definition of disease is. Disease is a set of, of symptoms and illnesses, but it has a known cause. Then it's a disease. So a syndrome is a set of illnesses and it's caused by an unknown cause. For this reason, diabetes is a disease, but Asperger's symptom is a syndrome. When you get to the autism spectrum disorders, Nobody knows exactly what causes them. There may be several things that cause them. And I think at some point we'll know a lot more in terms of what causes Asperger's and some of the autistic illnesses. But it's considered to be a syndrome and a condition because there's no known cause of it. We have ideas. We know something about it. But the, it's not conclusive. There's a lot that's not conclusive. And so if there's no specific known cause, it's a syndrome. It's it's a condition, it's not a disease. It's just a, a little quirk in the way that we call it, so I think that you need to uh, understand that. Um, occasionally, and I mentioned here, I'm going to just turn this page, um, occasionally you will get a person who gets the flu and it settles in their, uh, their pancreas. And in the pancreas you have the beta cells, the owls of Langerhans, that's the area that produces all of the insulin. And if that gets damaged, then what happens is you no longer get the hormones, you no longer get an insulin. Insulin is a hormone, it's also a protein, and if you don't get that, you become diabetic. And the thing is, you may get a flu that settles in that area and causes you to be diabetic. So in that sense, it's caused by a disease. So, I, so let me just run over this. An illness, a disease is an illness with an identified cause. A syndrome is a set of symptoms. Diabetes, diabetes is a disease. Autism is a spectrum disorder. And uh, this is ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. That's what it stands for. And it's considered to be a syndrome. And a syndrome is a group of symptoms with no known cause. And in autism, you have problems with social interaction, verbal and nonverbal skills. Communication is a problem. There's repetitive behavior. There's obsessive behavior narrow obsessive interests and academic problems. And what, so what is an illness? An illness is an unhealthy condition of mind or body. It's a sickness. So what is sickness? Sickness is having a disease and having ill health, which may be due to disease processes or it may be a syndrome. This gets really kind of convoluted, you know, it's like a cycle, but that's how it is defined. Uh, diabetes is defined as a disease. Disease. Okay, so what I did was I made a rough sketch here. 
of where the pancreas is because uh, if you have diabetes, you have a problem with your pancreas, part of it is shut down or part of it is not working right. And so I just want you to take a look at it so we'll both be on the same page. We'll all be on the same page as to what I'm talking about. This is the stomach. The pancreas is kind of behind the stomach. Not completely, but kind of behind the stomach. This is going to be the esophagus that runs into the stomach. This is going to be the stomach. It's kind of like a J shape. And this is going to be the duodenum. And it runs out into the small intestine. And the pancreas is situated right there. Now, if you look at this, I colored it in just so it would be easier to see. The heart would be in this area. I did not. Uh, I did not draw it in, but the the um, uh, pancreas is in the abdomen, kind of behind the stomach. Now, I didn't draw the stomach in either, but it's kind of shaped like this. And the two kidneys are beside it, and it's like in front of the kidneys. The stomach is in front of the pancreas. These are the adrenal glands. So you have the, the pancreas behind the stomach and in front of the two kidneys. This is where it's located, right in the stomach area of your body. And this is the area when this goes south, then you have uh, problems with diabetes. So let me get to more charts here. Diabetes is caused by a lack of insulin. It's normally produced by the pancreas. The pancreas is located in the abdomen. The pancreas is both a digestive organ and an endocrine gland. It's both. The regions of the gland produce insulin, certain regions. The regions of the gland that produce insulin are called the islets of Langerhorn's, and they have beta cells in them, and the beta cells produce the insulin. If anything happens to the beta cells and the beta cells are destroyed, then you're not going to get the insulin that you need. Or if you have diabetes, it may just slow down and stop. It may not be a dramatic, it stops right away. I want to, at some point, discuss hypoglycemia with you. Hypoglycemia is a precursor of diabetes, and, and it's kind of like the opposite. If you have too, mu too little insulin, and your blood sugar gets too high, you're diabetic. If you have too much insulin and it uses up the sugar in your system too fast so your blood sugar drops and it drops fairly rapidly, that's hypoglycemia. People who take insulin have to be careful because they can get hypoglycemic reactions. If they get too much uh, insulin, they take too much, they don't eat enough, they are doing exercising and it drops, then they they will have hypoglycemic episodes even though they are diabetic. And what they have to do is eat and get the blood sugar up. I always have food with me, crackers and candy or whatever, uh, to bring it up. You can get glucose tablets uh, in jars. It's easier to carry. They have them in different flavors. And if your blood sugar gets too low, you chew on a few of those. The problem I find with them, though, is they only have four grams of sugar in each little tablet. So you could be chewing quite a few of them before you get a lot of relief. I depend upon Mountain Dew, right here, my Mountain Dew. And if I crash, a few swigs of that, and you're back on top again. So you have to have a source of sweets if you're going to crash. I don't go anywhere without having a source of sweets, because you can, if you're brittle, you can go down quick. You can really crash quickly, and then all you have to do is drink whatever you drink, and you will uh, and you will get back up again. So the pancreas does more, though, than just, ha just create insulin. It keeps a steady flow of sugar or glucose in the blood. And it also helps in digestion. There are a number of digestive hormones that the pancreas secretes. So it's not just the insulin. Um, 
it's an enzyme. You have digestive enzyme. An enzyme is a protein that's produced by cells that cause biological reactions to occur. And it, so it's like a catalyst. A catalyst in chemistry, a catalyst is, is a substance that causes chemical reactions to occur. Well, in a way, the, uh, pro, the enzymes that come from the uh, pancreas are catalysts to make digestion occur. The pancreas keeps a level amount of sugar in the blood, and it also takes care of digestion, and it also does the insulin. So it really is a multi-purpose organ, very important organ. The liver also releases sugar, and I'll explain this, and then I'm going to close here. We'll go on with it next time. A lot of people have what's known as a dawn phenomena. They get up in the morning. They haven't eaten anything. They check their blood sugar, and it's sky high. And they'll go to their doctor, and they'll say, how could it be high? I haven't even eaten. I haven't eaten since last night. And the doctor will explain to them that the liver can sense when your blood sugar is too low. And so it starts pumping sugar into your bloodstream. Or oh, glucose is the right word for it. I've been calling it sugar. It's easy to understand, but it's really glucose. It pumps this glucose into your blood and gets your blood sugar way up. The problem is it doesn't know when to quit. Normally, the pancreas would stop it, but if the pancreas isn't working, then the pancreas can't stop it. So it keeps pumping the old sugar in your system and gets your blood sugar very, very high, and you haven't even eaten. So if you are a diabetic and sometimes you have real high sugar and there doesn't seem to be any explanation for it in terms of what you've eaten or what you've done, then it may well be that you are experiencing the liver putting sugar in your system because it senses that you're too low and it's doing it on its own, but it just can't quit on its own. It doesn't have that ability to know and it can't do it. Normally the pancreas would. So that's the dawn phenomena. It happens a lot in the morning. Now we only have just a very short period of time left, so I think I'm going to close it here. Um, and. Uh, we will next time continue with diabetes, and I will explain a lot more to you than I've explained today. It's interesting. It's a difficult disease. Millions of people have it. It can, it can really do things with your personality and with your mood and how you adjust to things. And so it is something that we really need to look into. Plus, I've had several people ask me to do it, and I was planning to do it anyway. So we'll continue with this next time. Please join me then. Um...